This world of wild nature astonishes us with its diversity. Life is flourishing here in spite of everything. Courageous and cruel creatures, hunting animals and their prey, cohabitate here very peacefully and amicably. Mother Nature endowed them with unique abilities to adapt to severe winters and dry summers. A unique natural environment, taken under the protective care of people, was formed in a valley of the river Desna. The rich agricultural lands of Polisia forests, flat plain meadows, and marshes extend for kilometers in the north of Ukraine. This ancient landscape was formed hundreds of thousands of years ago under the influence of glaciers. The river Desna added a special flourish into the picturesque landscape. Changing its direction, the river Desna bed formed numerous lakes, oxbow lakes, and streams. The Desna Sarhutsky National Nature Reserve Park protects about 16,000 square meters of vast lands. This is a land of pure rivers and lakes inhabited by river and forest animals. Here, not only separate species of animals and plants are under the protection of the nature park, but also entire biotopes, natural corners with special habitation conditions. These lands are of special interest for science. The protected area can be considered as a standard benchmark and can be used as a unique natural laboratory where there are convenient conditions for conducting scientific studies and investigations. Here, the scientists monitor the state of the population of rare species of animals and plants and research the state of the environment. They do it by using state-of-the-art methods and taking real-time approaches that today are considered modern. Sometimes the scientists conduct large-scale research by organizing the Desna Stars Echo Camp. Not only famous scientists take part in them, but also school teachers participate in this research together with their pupils. Knowing theory and the scientific methods, they try to put them into practice by researching a living environment in the river Desonka and its banks. Taking into consideration that the bottom of the river, the water column and the bank are inhabited with different species, it is not enough to apply only one research method. We research different groups of living organisms, which inhabit different parts of a pond. In the column of the water, on the bottom and on the bank of the river. In this way we can explore the whole environment of the pond. Seen as the river de Sonka is a pond of first-class purity, it is inhabited with rare endangered species of fish. One of them is a tench, a representative of near-bottom fauna. Based on the development of the size and weight of this fish, we can draw a conclusion about sludge deposits in the river, an indicator of all forms of pollution. Investigating the state of the near-bottom fish and their development, we can point to the amount of sludge deposits. If a river is polluted, then such a fish as tench are the first to escape from the river. As is known, fish are at the top of the food chain. So how much feed is in the river? What is the level of the water and the amount of oxygen for weight, fatness and size of fish can be all determined. In order to ascertain it, an ichthyologist has to catch big and small fish of local species, that is, fish which have been living here for many hundreds of years and do not disappear from the river. The most dispersed species of perch are dace, red-eye, crucian and carp. Tench and gold carp are the most valuable fish species here. The 
Дуже цікавим є такий об'єкт, як карась срібля. In this case, this species is in very good physiological shape. It shows positive morphological data and has a significant coefficient of fatness. Фізіологічні параметри, значні коефіцієнти вгодованості. Another characteristic of how to determine the state of the water ecosystem is the asymmetry that is determined by counting and comparing the number of chickles on their pectoral and ventral fins. The difference in the number of scales along the fish's body on the right and left sides is a sign of the detrimental effect of the ecosystem on the growth and development of fish. We can apply this method right near water. You do not need to bring fish to a laboratory. You can measure its parameters and put the fish back into the river again. This method is very convenient for evaluating valuable species of fish that are listed in the Red Book of Extinction. The presence of a symmetry is a so-called warning to ecologists that the pond is polluted with toxic substances. The overstock of organic substances and the lack of oxygen can cause changes in the shape of the fish. Now we're measuring the oxygen content in water. This index of the sanitary state of a water reservoir is the main one, which defines the level of pollution by organic substances. It is known that oxygenated organic substances transform into a mineral form. In other words, they split into simpler chemical substances and again go into an organic matter regime. So due to the content of oxygen in water, the river de Sanka purifies itself and is a living environment for many water inhabitants, including semi-aquatic species. For example, frogs respond to any environmental changes at the genetic level. This reaction becomes noticeable already in the second generation of frogs. Such frogs are distinguished by an asymmetry of spots and lines on their bodies. We can see two lines on the right thigh, two lines on the left thigh, three lines on the right shank, and three lines on the left shank. There are no spots. This is a female frog. Lack of asymmetry on a frog's body is indicative of a pure environment, so the diversity of living creatures in these lands is quite obvious. There are about 12 species of amphibians here. I'm holding a moor frog in my hand now. This is the most widespread species in the Desna Starohutsky National Nature Reserve Park. It inhabits the forest and the meadow. As a rule, it lives in grass. The frog hatched out this year. Recently, it turned from a tadpole into a frog. And now more frogs inhabit an entire forest. We're walking along this forest path and can see how many frogs are croaking and jumping here. But you can hardly see a toad frog at this time of day, because it is a nocturnal creature that waits for the darkness. The frog has special horned hobbles on its paws, due to which it moves out of sight very quickly. Another unique peculiarity of the species is a big tadpole. The tadpole of the toad frog is much bigger than an adult frog. It is about 17 centimeters long. Another species of frog, which has a twilight way of life, is the common toad. In daytime, this frog hides under snags and grass. A common toad has venom glands, which are called parotides. They are behind the frog's eyes. When a predator attacks, the frog starts biting it and secrets poison. That's why nobody dares to touch the common toad. This is how these amphibians protect themselves. In the Desnanska Starhutsky National Nature Reserve Park, you can always see about 20 species of small mammals. Each of them prefers different natural conditions. The yellow-necked mouse can be found in a broad-leaved birch forest, while the common vole inhabits the meadow. This time a red-backed mouse fell into a trap when the forest was being felled. This is a typical inhabitant of pine forest and is called the queen of the forest. You can hardly see during felling. It is usually caught on the border with the pine forest.
In order to research live animals in different biotopes, scientists set up live traps. Falling into these live traps, an animal remains alive and intact. In the evening, researchers put bait in the trap and in the morning, they set free the animal after conducting research on it. We determine the sex and age of each animal that got caught in the live traps and measure its body size. The length of this animal's body is 76 millimeters, the tail 36 millimeters and the paws 13.5 millimeters. This is an adult female animal. We then set the animal free. Red-toothed shrews, or water shrews, get caught in traps most often. These shrews are active all year round. They can eat not only insects, but also small vertebrate animals. For example, the offspring of lizards, frogs, or even some species of birds. Shrews are cannibals. They can eat their relatives and offspring. It is a terrifying predator. If we were to imagine that red-toothed shrews were about the size of a dog or tiger, they would be the most dangerous predators on the planet. In order to survive, the red-toothed shrew must eat food weighing one and a half times its own weight every day. In winter, when the quantity of food becomes less, the shrew gets depressed by reducing its weight and the mass of organs. In this way, the red-toothed shrew manages to adapt to tough living conditions. And as for the water shrew, it has adapted to the attack prey that exceeds the shrew's weight several times. Having poison glands, this is one of few mammals that is able to immobilize its prey by secreting poison. It can attack a prey that exceeds it in weight. For example, it can attack a huge frog and bite it. The victim can get paralyzed and after that the red-toothed shrew can eat the immobilized prey. It doesn't need to run after its prey and hunt for it very long. Living organisms try to adapt to everything in order to survive in the severe and dangerous conditions of the surrounding world. During millions of years, nature has created many ways by means of which animals and plants adapted to changes in the length of the day or the lack of moisture. They can survive in severe frost or summer heat conquer predators or simply avoid danger. By endowing living organisms with means of survival, nature shows miracles of ingenuity every time. It is always surprising, sometimes it becomes a discovery, and you realize how many unknown and unexplored things are in the world. Travel together with us to explore the animal and plant world in the program Undiscovered Ukraine.